This is Diana again. Yes, it's me, your favorite astro nerd. September. Wow, this is a very busy month uh, for stargazers and astrophotography. A lot going on. I am ready to get my Dwarf 3 probably in two days. I can't wait. Other people have it and I don't have it yet. Can you believe it? But it's coming. It's on its way. So Dwarf 3, Dwarf Telescope fans, lots of videos coming up. Uh, but in the meantime, I want to show you a few things that I have been doing in PixInsight. Uh, especially with some of the newer scripts that it's so easy to edit now. Who wants to get complicated editing? I don't. I can spend hours, but I don't want to. I don't want to. The easier, the better, but we also want to have the best final image. The Sunflower Galaxy, known as Messier 63, is a spiral galaxy located in the northern constellation Canes Venachiti. It lies roughly 37 million light years away from Earth. <laughs> this is a ginormous galaxy. Oh my God. It is roughly the same size as the Milky Way galaxy and it has a mass 140 billion <laughs> times than the, of the sun. It is also believed to have a supermassive black hole with a mass of up to 30 million suns. <laughs> So now let's take a look at pics in size. Like I said before, where I know what I'm doing. <laughs> now I want to show real quick the uh, progress here on the after calibration of the frames. So let's just go ahead and take a look at the blue. So this is kind of like uh, we have an idea. Uh, my telescope, it's uh, 1000 millimeters. And as you know, it's a Newtonian telescope. Let's say the green. Red, woo, red is looking good, eh? And some of the ha. Huh? Now I want to show a little bit of my newest uh, workflow is uh, everything is changing all the time. So I'm constantly changing a lot of things on the workflow, but to make things easy now I'm fixing size, I use the batch processing. So for this one, for the first time, I used the uh, fast batch processing and this cut the calibration part into a lot. But you know what? With all the new scripts, a blur exterminator and all the new things that we have right now that with just a click of a button, we can fix all of those problems. I, I don't find it necessary to go through a very long um, calibration process so all of the images were done here and it was really fast as a matter of fact uh, it was approximately five minutes per channel the whole process that's good Channel combination, it's our next step. That's what I do. I don't do dynamic background extraction anymore on the independent channels, as I have watched several tutorials, especially from Adam Block Studios. And in his opinion, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, <laughs> so I just skip all that, those parts, and I just do the dynamic background extraction after the channel combination. And for those that are new in astrophotography, don't be scared. This is what I, we always get, a black dark image like this with a very few uh, white po points there that those are stars. But as soon as we give an automatic stretch, then we can see our image. Oh my God, that is my galaxy. One of the processes that is not changing so far it's uh, cropping the images and it's always very important never skip this part and remember you always want to crop all of these edges and black artifacts so then you don't have problems uh, especially on the uh, uh, photometric color calibration and color calibrations it just makes things difficult all of those early processes on your workflow always be sure that you uh, use as a guide 
the worst frame that you have uh, with more uh, clipping and black artifacts and be sure that you crop all of the images identically. Okay, and before I go any further, one of the most important steps, in my opinion, it's uh, a linear fit is we need to <clears throat> balance a little bit the colors on the different channels. And there is also a new script that I am using. So I'm not doing all of these individual steps uh, that we used to do per channel. You can still do that, but under toolbox, Auto linear fit works really good. Uh, this is something that it's uh, making this process very fast. And now it's going to work on balancing those channels. The next step, it's going to be the dynamic background extraction uh, to try to start removing a lot of these gradients and ugly colors that we're seeing here all over the image. And don't worry, it's all normal for everybody. It's different. It can be sometimes all green or yellow, or blue, all kind of colors. Um, there are different uh processes now that are going to help us to remove those gradients and one of them is uh, Graxper which is one that I really like to use but Seti Astro and I am going to be doing uh, upcoming videos on some of the scripts for Seti Astro which are really cool I don't hear too many people talking about but they're really good and they are included now on the Pixen site and you can also download them individually but for example, he has here the automatic dynamic background extraction. And let's just take a look real quick on what this one does. This is one of the new scripts that I am using. And I'm just going to use the uh, default settings. I'm not going to do anything else. I'm not changing anything else. And let's just go ahead and execute. It's also a very fast script. The results are very good. You can see it's working there. And it says gradient removal complete. Okay, let's just go ahead and take a look. Okay, so let's see what has been extracted. Yeah, we have seen all of that in the image. Whoo, pew, let's just throw away that one. We don't need it. And this is the new image now with all the gradient removal. I mean, look at that. Let's just go ahead and compare here. It definitely made a huge difference. I'm very happy. First new script that I am using here, SETI Astro Automatic Background Extraction. Now it's time to work a little bit on some color calibration. Let me just go ahead and try here the uh, photometric color calibration using the background neutralization. And for this, I need to create a little preview here. And I am going to use here, uh, select the preview. So it's going to do that as a reference. Okay, uh, so as you can see, not as many stars have been detected, but uh, it work on the uh, white balance and certain things. Oh my God, that looks so ugly. This is not the way it's going to be. So let me just go ahead here and do a reset. Okay, and now we're getting better results. Okay, now finally, all of those reddish colors are starting to disappear. Cyril doesn't have the blur exterminator, but it does uh, the convolution of other processes. Stay tuned for my next video that is finally going to be, hey, I'll do use the same galaxy and we'll compare how I did with Cyril, which is a great software too for editing. It's the one that it's free, Blur Exterminator, oh yes. I am using the same settings that work for me. Uh, nothing uh, on the option, nothing has been enabled, but this is the one that it's going to do some sharpening. It's going to type those uh, uh, stars and it's going to make it even better. So we'll start always. You want to do Blur Exterminator early on in the process or you have to do it on the linear face early on. Okay, so it's done. 
So yes, let's go ahead and take a look here at some of the stars. So before and after. And right after Blur Exterminator, another crucial step noise exterminator, which is going to work on all of this ugly background noise. Noise exterminator, you do it early on on the process, but you can use it after the image has been stretched and I use it a lot, but then uh, kind of like at the beginning, I like to use the denoise somewhere between 70 and 85. This one has a lot of noise, detail 20. Uh, later on in the processes after the image has been stretched, then you can decrease a little bit, uh, a lot, probably the denoise, so it's not as aggressive. Ah, and ta-da! <laughs> okay, so look how nice the image already, the uh, galaxy starts to stand out a little bit more. And now I'm starting to see a little bit more of what I want. Sometimes you have to improvise a little bit depending on the image. And I know it's kind of like pale, but it will bring, it will bring those colors uh, that I am looking for. And now let me bring again the curves transformation. I'm trying to make a miracle here and just get better uh, colors. Okay, now we got a lot of blue. So that's a little bit strong for my taste, but it's not bad. Um, So there's got to be a little bit of a balance. It's too blue. Okay. And little by little, I keep working on those colors that are very dim as I only have one hour of each color. Let's continue. Okay, so now I want to do a little thing, uh, just this very subtle, but I extracted the luminance from the image, and this is the luminance right here. Um, and let me show the mask, so you follow me, okay? So there is the mask, and I am going to increase the lightness here, like 0.6, and saturation like 0 0.370, and let's just go ahead and see what happens. Just get a little bit boost there. See, so it improve a little bit the saturation and the colors. I need to do another touch of on the core. And for that, I need to bring my other little mask here. Okay, and now I am going back into HDR, multi-scale transform. I may have to change it a little bit, we'll see. Ah, uh, let's see, and that is about right. I, I think that's better, so it gives a little bit more of that uh, black hole. <laughs> black holes are black. <gasps> and this is the way it's going to be now. I am going to save this to do a final touch on Photoshop. Star Spikes Pro, okay? Because my images are going to stars, uh, to have star spikes because I use a Newtonian telescope. That's about right. And this is a personal taste. You don't have to do it, but I, I, 
I already have it as having a, a Newtonian telescope. Well, if you like everything that you have seen, well, click like. If you didn't like the workflow, but you like me, you can click like too. <laughs> and talk to me tell me did you like it whatever you want to tell me i'd love to talk to you guys to all my astro dudes here on my channel uh so i'm going to see you next week in the next few days with another video oh cable management is coming and i am also going to remove the mirrors of my newtonian telescope and i will be cleaning that for the first time since i got this telescope but i'm very nervous about that one but i will record i'm sure it's going to be hilarious thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in a few days